Hello, Eric. Good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you today? Uh, I'm fine. Did you work today? Um, yes, uh, I work from home. Ah, from home. You use a computer. Um, no, um, cell phone. Ah, oh, okay. What do you do? Um, what is your occupation? What do you do? Um, work in bank. Oh, you work in a bank? Yes. Okay. Are you a bank teller? What? No, 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 entendí. Uh, bank teller es la persona, es como un cajero, solo que en los bancos se les dice uh, bank teller. No, eh, soy como un gestor de color, no, no sé cómo sería eso. Ah, ok, so you are in the collections department, está como en el departamento de colección de, de cobros. Mm -hmm. Ok, so you work in the collections department. I imagine it's stressful. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes, it's a stressful job. Well, that's nice. Uh, did you complete the platform? Yes. Okay, that's nice. Well, I see that most of you have completed the platform, which is really nice. So for today, we're going to finish the section number five. And uh, well, the first thing that we have is simple present WH questions, as you can see in the screen. So I'm going to play the audio so you can hear the pronunciation of these questions. Exercise three, grammar focus. Simple present WH questions. What sports do you play? I play hockey and baseball. Who do you play baseball with? I play with some friends from work. Where do you play? We play at Hunter Park. How often do you practice? We practice once or twice a week. When do you practice? We practice on Sundays. What time do you start? We start at 10 o'clock in the morning. Okay, so that's the grammar part for the WH questions in present simple. Uh, do you have any question about the vocabulary? No. All right. So uh, to complete this conversation, the, I know that you can manage WH questions in a very good way. Just remember that if you want to add something extra, like a frequency adverb, you have to do it uh, before the verb usually go. Como si usted quisiera preguntar a qué horas empiezas usualmente. A dónde pondríamos el usually? En esta pregunta, what time? What time do you usually? Or? Do you usually? Ajá, uh -huh, excellent. Start. El usually iría antes del verbo. What time do you usually start? Esto es si queremos agregarle un frequency adverb. Now, um, let's complete the conversation with the correct WH question and then we're going to practice the uh, conversation as you can see we have some of them are like with the word involved so they it means that they go to with, together for example in this one who es con quien es se completa con el with who do you play baseball with la palabra with es con Cuando vamos a preguntar con quién haces tal cosa, con quién miras televisión, 
tenemos que agregar el with al final de la pregunta. Y el who significa quién. Para preguntar con quién, vamos a preguntar con who al principio y al final ponemos with. Ok, en este caso with solo se usaría con who. Sí, cuando quiere preguntar con quién, con quién hace esa, um, con quién vas al cine. Who do you go to the movie with? Ajá. Para preguntar con quién necesitamos esas dos palabras en la pregunta. ¿Con quién? Necesitamos el who y el with. La palabra with también se puede utilizar sola cuando usted está haciendo oraciones. Por ejemplo, si usted quiere decir yo, li, uh, yo vivo con mis padres, ¿cómo sería la opción? Sería I live, uh -huh. yo vivo. Uh -huh. With my parents. With my parents, excellent. I live. With my parents. Uh -huh. Ahí sí se puede usar sola. La palabra with significa con. Uh, si quiere decir yo juego, yo juego fútbol con mis amigos. ¿Cómo I sería? Play la? I, with my friends. I play soccer with my friends. Excellent. La palabra with significa con. Ahora, si queremos hacer la pregunta, ¿con quién? ¿Con quién haces esto? ¿Con quién vas a tal parte? Entonces necesitamos ambas palabras, who y with. Who al principio y with al final de la pregunta. Eh, por ejemplo, si yo le quisiera preguntar, ¿con quién practicas inglés? ¿Cómo nos quedaría esa pregunta? Who do you practice English with? Excellent, así sería. Who do you practice English with? Excellent. Uh, creo que eso era como lo más uh, interesante de resaltar en esta parte porque no habíamos hecho preguntas utilizando el con quién. Para preguntar eso es who y with al final. Y, ok, so vamos a tratar de completar la conversación utilizando las palabras que están acá. Um, first thing, it's, vamos a ver si lo hago más grandecito, para que no nos cueste mucho ver. Ok, last que tenemos es what sports, who and with, where, how often, when and what time. Let's complete the cor with the correct WH question word and then we're going to practice. So number one, it says, I watch sports on TV every weekend. And then they answer, really? What sports do you like to watch? And it says, soccer, it's my favorite. Do you usually watch soccer? Y la respuesta es, on Sunday afternoon. Entonces, ¿cuál era la WH word? Well. When, ajá, vamos a ver. When, excellent. When do you usually watch soccer? On Sunday afternoon. And uh, do you usually watch it at home? No, at my friend's house. He has a really big TV. Where do you usually? Where, aha, uh -huh. place, where, aha, uh -huh. that's the answer, where. So, así nos quedaría la primera conversación. Let us repeat, can you repeat after me, please? I watch sports on TV every weekend. I watch sports, I watch sports, sports on TV every, every weekend. weekend. Really? What sport do you like to watch? Really? really? What sport do you like to watch? Soccer, it's my favorite. Soccer, it's my favorite. When do you usually watch okay. soccer? When do you usually watch soccer? On Sunday afternoon. On Sunday afternoon. And where do you usually watch it at home? And where do you usually watch it at home? 
No, at my friend's house, she has a really big TV. No, no oh, at my friend's house, house. She has, has, a really has a really big TV. Oh, okay, excellent. Now, let's go with the number two. Second conversation. It says, do you go bike riding? Oh, about once a month. What is the answer here? When? Mm, veamos, le responde once a month, about once a month, alrededor de una vez al mes. How often? Yes, how often? So you can see the answer. How often do you go bike riding? Y la respuesta, oh, about once a month. I love to go bike riding every Saturday. Really? Mm, do you go? Y luego dice, usually at about one o'clock. Alrededor de la una. What time? Mm -hmm. What time? Ajá, uh -huh. o puede ser when también. Pero la primera opción es what time, so excellent. What time do you go? Oh, usually at about one o'clock. And then they say, oh yeah, do you usually go with? Who? Yes, that's the answer. Who do you usually go with? And then they answer, my sister, come with us next time. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, let's try to repeat here. It's number two. Aquí a esta no la puedo hacer más grande, así que ahí vamos a hacerle viejitos a la computadora un rato. Okay, let's repeat. How often do you go bike riding? How often, How often do you go bike riding? riding? Oh, about once a month. Oh, about, oh, about once, once a month. month. I love to go bike riding. I go every Saturday. I love to go, I to go, go bike riding. riding. I, I, go riding. I go every Saturday. Really? What time do you go? Really? What time do you go? Usually, Usually at about one o'clock. Usually at about one o'clock. I go Oh yeah. Who do you usually go with? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, what do you say? Oh, yeah. My sister, come with us next time. My, My sister, sister. come yeah. with us next time. next time. Okay, well, that's about uh, WH questions. So, in this case, and the next exercise, you will complete the conversation with WH questions. You have the answer. You have to write the questions. As you can see, the number, well, the first is already done for you. The answer, vamos a leer la respuesta para saber que, cuál fue la pregunta. I like a lot of sport, but I really love volleyball. Entonces la pregunta era, what sports do you like? So, tienen que escribir cuatro preguntas basándose en la respuesta que está ahí. Les voy a dar unos cinco minutos para que escriban las preguntas que hacen falta y luego vamos a revisar.
Vamos. Have you finished? Yep. Okay, let's see. Okay, the number one, it's already done. What sports do you like? The uh, volunteer for number two, let's say number two. Okay, Eric. Who do you usually play with? Yes, excellent. Who do you usually play with? Está bien. La formuló bien. I usually play with my sister. Mm -hmm. Very good. I volunteer for the next one. Igual si la tienen así sin el adverbio usually está bien. Y con el adverbio también. Next. Number three. When do they practice? When do you practice? Uh -huh. Solo el pronombre es you. When do you practice? That's okay. Eh, en este caso, ¿por qué sería you? Porque la respuesta es con we. Uh -huh. es, okay, si yo le preguntara, usted me dice que juega con su hermano. Usted me dice, ah, yo juego con mi hermano. Entonces, si yo le pregunta, ¿cuándo practican ustedes? Yo le hago la pregunta con el you, que es ustedes, y usted me responde con nosotros. Ah, nosotros, mi hermano y yo, pues. Ok. Ajá, es, es un juego algo confuso, ¿verdad? Ajá, pero así va. Yeah. So, yo le pregunto, ¿cuándo practican ustedes? Usted y su hermano, ¿verdad? Usted me dice, ah, nosotros practicamos tal fecha. Por eso me responde utilizando we. Okay. Okay. Uh, next. Me. Thank you. What time do you start? Excellent. What time do you start? Good. And the last one. The last one. Where do you usually play? Where do you usually play? Uh -huh. O where do you play? So lo han hecho excelente. Aún agregando el, el usually, que es lo que nos había dado dificultad, pero ahora lo hicieron excelente. Uh, ahí la pueden dejar así con usually. Igual sin el usually. De ambas formas está correcta y formularon bien las preguntas. Eh, lo de los sujetos, cuando, porque es you, porque es we, eso es, es un poco de, de práctica, ¿verdad? Eso de saber cuándo con los sujetos, pero lo han hecho excelente con las preguntas. Ahora, para practicar un poco de speaking, um, podríamos tomar las mismas preguntas, pero responder con nuestra propia información. Uh, por ejemplo, yo le puedo preguntar, Andrea, Andrea, what sports do you like? I love a lot of sport, but I like, I, but I like uh, basketball uh, and, and soccer. Excellent. Who do you play with? Uh, with my friends sometimes and with my sister too. When do you practice? Right, actually, I I don't I I'm not practice. 
Okay. Actually means um, en realidad. So, mm. I, I don't know how to you say no practico ahorita. Oh, right now or in these days, estos días, en estos días no estoy practicando. In these days, I am not practicing. O para decir en la actualidad, se dice currently. Se okay. Currently. Y, y nos confunde uh -huh. un poco el actually. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Currently, Porque, uh, I am... Currently. Es currently. Se escribe currently. Y se sí. pronuncia currently. Ok. Currently, um, I am not practicing. Excellent. Ajá, uh -huh. excellent. Y es, es bueno porque nosotros confundimos el actually con el español. Eh, actually es como para decir en realidad o para corregir también información. Uh, por ejemplo, a mí me pueden decir, uh, mi nombre es Flor. Eh, mucha gente me dice, de María. Y adivinando. Entonces yo, actually it's Italia. Uh, that's my second name. Es Italia, no de María. <laughs> so okay, thank it. you. Uh, en realidad no es de María, es Italia. So I, I can say, actually, it's Italia. Uh -huh. So it's, it's kind of confusing because pensamos en el español. <laughs> but that's okay. Ya aprendimos algo nuevo y de eso se trata. Yep. Y, y eso es la importancia de que participen. Si no participan, entonces no sé qué hacer. <laughs> Ok, um, como no está practicando ahorita, no podemos decir what time do you start. Ok, where do you play, Andrea? When, when you have the opportunity to play, where do you play? In the park. In the park, ok, excellent. Yeah. Now, Andrea, can you ask the question to another classmate? Ok. I don't know if our volunteers. A volunteer? Yeah. Okay, hay escasez de volunteers. <laughs> Entonces vamos a seleccionar una víctima. <laughs> Eric, probably. Andrea, can you ask Eric? Okay. Uh, Eric, what sports do you like? I like a lot of sports, but I really like um, soccer. Okay. Who do you play with? I usually play with my co-worker. Okay. And when do you practice? Um, currently, no practice, but... Uh, before practice in Wednesday. Oh, on okay. Wednesdays. Mm -hmm. uh, what time do you start before? Uh, in the evening. Okay. And where do you play? Um, no sé cómo se dice polideportivo. En de polideportivo, como es un nombre propio, los nombres propios no se cambian. Y eso you can say in the polideportivo. Ok. Mm -hmm. So okay. that's nice. Excellent job. Poli poli eh, in Santa Tecla. Eh, no, en, en Soyapango. Uh, thank you. Okay, great job. Now, when I do it very well. Uh, yeah, you did it excellent, you too. So when we talk about, um, okay, con la palabra currently. Currently. Como me refiero a algo que está sucediendo en este momento, voy a usar el presente continuo. Currently. I am not practicing. Okay, so 
Currently, I am not practicing. En estos días, no estoy, o en estos momentos, no estoy practicando. Ahora, si nos vamos a referir a algo que solíamos hacer, pero ya no, vamos a usar used to. Por ejemplo, puede decir, nosotros solíamos practicar los miércoles. We, ay, lo escribí al revés. <ríe> we, we use to. El used to significa solíamos. We used to practice, luego el verbo. We used to practice on Wednesday. Uh -huh. Solíamos practicar los miércoles. We used to practice on Wednesday. Uh -huh. um, si quiere decir solía jugar con mis amigos. I used to play with my friends. Eso es el used to. Es para actividades que usted hacía en el pasado y por alguna razón ya no las hace en el presente. Para eso usamos el used to. Yeah, it's important to know. Okay, so we're going to stop with this topic and uh, we're going to check. Uh, we have a conversation in which we talk about abilities. I am sure that you probably saw a similar conversation in the platform. We have this one. Um, I'm going to play the conversation. As you can see, the topic of the, conver the, the conversation says, I can't sing. As you see in the picture, It says, uh, WDC TV, can you sing or act? Be a start. TV talent contest. Do you know contest? Do you know the word contest? No. Okay, contest significa concurso. Uh -huh. Concurso, en este caso, TV talent contest. Es un concurso de talentos en la televisión. So content is concurso. And this is the conversation. Let's listen. Page 66, exercise 6, conversation. I can't sing. Listen and practice. Oh, look! There's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no. I can't sing at all. But I can play the piano. So, maybe we can enter the contest. Sure. Why not? Okay. Let's practice tomorrow. Okay, do you have any question about the conversation? No questions. No question. Do you know when they say at all? At all. Mm, no del todo. No de... At all. Mm. Eh, para nada. Para nada. Ajá. Uh -huh. I can't sing at all. Sería... No puedo cantar para nada, so no, cero, absolutamente no. Uh -huh. That's a rule. Okay, so I'm going to send a picture of the conversation so you can practice it. And uh, let me check in your WhatsApp group. I need to close this tab so I can have more space. Okay, les voy a mandar ahorita la picture de la conversación para que podamos practicarla en parejas y practicar pronunciación. Ok, ahí tienen el... Ya, yeah. already sent the conversation, so 
I'm going to create the sections in groups so you can practice in pairs or in groups of uh, three. Yes, this has to be this. Okay, remember to click join or unirse so you can practice the conversation. Ahí está. Ok. Voy a iniciar yo, Carla. Oh, look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can, what can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can do. Oh, no, I can sing at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure, why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. Okay, si quieres ahora cambiamos de, de, de rol. <laughs> oh, look. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thank you. Well, you do well. Well, you can too. Oh, no, I can't sing at all, but I can play the piano. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can end uh, the concert. Sure, why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. Okay. Okay, practicamos mañana. <laughs> <laughs> no, me refería a la siguiente. <laughs> la siguiente que sería Nelly. <laughs> Vaya, Nelly. Comienzo yo. Sí. Okay. Oh, look. There is talent concert on Saturday. Let's enter. I can enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thank. Well, you can do. Oh, no, I can't sing at all. But I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. So why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. Okay. Okay, I see. I see. <laughs> <laughs> The camera is three, right? Sí. ¿Por qué no vamos un ringlón cada uno? Uh -huh. Ya, yeah. también pueden, um, sí, pueden tratar de hacerlo así también, un ringlón cada uno. Bueno, ok. Empiezo, empiezo yo. De acuerdo. Okay. Oh, look, there is a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can see it really well. <sighs> oh, thank you. Will you can too? Oh, no. 
I can sit at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure, why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. Hoy comienza. Hoy comienza Nelly. Okay, I think some of your classmates are still practicing. Okay, as you can see in the conversation, they are talking about abilities. When we talk about abilities, we use the auxiliary can. But, well, I'm going to wait for a minute so the other classmates can join and listen the explanation. I am sure that you have studied this topic because you finished. Most of you have finished the platform. Some of you already have your certificates. So um, when we talk about abilities, we use the auxiliary verb can. Can is to talk about abilities. For example, um, uh, you can say, I can play the piano, I can play the guitar, uh, I can sing very well, and etc. One important thing to mention is that when you use the auxiliary can, it's the same for all the subjects. You don't need to change anything. And uh, I'm going to share the video about pronunciation. When we are talking about abilities, we uh, if it is affirmative, you say can. But well, sometimes it's a little difficult to understand if it is affirmative or negative. Con esto, aquí se nos da la clave para um, hablar de habilidades o la falta de habilidades. Cuando es una falta de habilidad, decimos I can't. Por ejemplo, si yo digo, yo no puedo hablar uh, japonés, I can't, I can't speak Japanese, but I can speak English. Well, so it's, es un poco de, de estrés cuando lo hacemos en negativo. I can't, I can't speak Japanese, but I can speak Spanish. Y es un poco más corto en affirmative. Um, so let us watch the video and then you can tell me if you have any questions about this. Using can for ability. Let's get started by listening to a conversation titled, I can't sing very well. This conversation illustrates how this topic is used in a real life setting. I can't sing. Oh, look, there's a talent contest on Saturday. Let's enter. I can't enter a talent contest. What can I do? You can sing really well. Oh, thanks. Well, you can too. Oh, no, I can't sing at all, but I can play the piano. So maybe we can enter the contest. Sure, why not? Okay, let's practice tomorrow. 
Now let's analyze the examples on this chart. Can for ability. I can sing very well. You can sing very well. He can sing very well. She can't sing at all. We can't sing at all. They can't sing at all. Can you sing? Yes, I can. No, I can't. Can I sing? Yes, you can. No, you can't. Can he sing? Yes, he can. No, he can't. Can she sing? Yes, she can. No, she can't. Can we sing? Yes, we can. No, we can't. Can they sing? Yes, they can. No, they can't. What can I do? You can sing. Who can sing? Philip can. I would like to explain the usage of can. We can use can to express some kind of ability, whether that is related to sports, professional, something artistic, or something special. Singing is something that only a few people can do, and most people can't. In my case, I can't sing at all. Let me get started by explaining how to form statements with can. To do this, we can follow this formula. Subject plus can or can't plus the verb plus complement. Now let's analyze a couple of examples. I can sing very well. Now the subject is I. Then we're going to add can. After that, we have the verb sing. Uh, finally, we have a complement. Let's analyze one more example. She can't sing at all. The subject is she. Then we're going to add can't. After that, we have the verb sing. Finally, we can include a complement at all. Now let's learn how to form questions using can. To do this, we can follow this formula. The auxiliary can plus subject plus the verb plus a complement. Let's analyze a couple of examples to make sure we understand this topic. Can you sing? First, we need to add the auxiliary can. After that, we include the subject. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark. Finally, we can include a complement. In these examples, there is no complement, but we could add something like at home. These are yes or no questions. So the way to answer this type of questions is quite simple. For the question, can you sing? We can answer positively by saying, yes, I can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, I can't. Let's analyze one last example. Can he sing? First, we need the auxiliary verb can. After that, we include the subject he. Next, we have the verb sing and a question mark at the end. We can answer positively by saying, yes, he can. And we can answer negatively by saying, no, he can't. Now it's your turn to practice using can and can't. I would like for you to talk about your abilities and the abilities of your friends, family, and co-workers. For example, I can play tennis, but I can't play.
play basketball. My coworker can design websites. But he can't program. My daughter can play the piano, but she can't sing. After you finish this activity, share your work in our discussion forums. Okay, that's about the use of CAM for ability. I know that we have to practice this topic. And uh, I don't know, what did you understand from the video? Is the video clear for you? Yep. It's clear. Okay, that's nice because, oh, well, in that case, you can use the auxiliary can. It's for the person, okay? No matter if it's first person, second, third, no matter, plural is can. Siempre será can, okay? Y luego el verbo que sigue, um, si se recuerdan en presente dijimos que se les agrega S a la tercera persona y todo eso. Pero en este caso, cuando estamos trabajando con el auxiliar can, eso no sucede. No puedo decir she can play the piano, no. Ya no se hace eso de estar agregando S por, por, por el auxiliar. Um, uh, she can play the piano very well. Um, Nelly, do you have a question? Yes. Eh, en el can no es un verbo. Uh, es un verbo auxiliar. Uh -huh. es, es, se puede usar el solo también. Por ejemplo, si estamos pidiendo ayuda, él se puede utilizar solo. ¿A qué me refiero? Sí es un verbo y significa poder, ¿verdad? Eh, el verbo can es utilizado para hablar de habilidades, ¿ok? Por falta de habilidades, si lo hacemos en negativo. Y también se utiliza para pedir permiso. Okay. Es un auxiliar que tiene eh, unas tres funciones. Ah, podemos decir, uh, she can, ahí estoy hablando de la habilidad. She can, ella puede hablar three languages. de hablar tres lenguajes. O si se fijan, estoy hablando de una tercera persona singular, pero al verbo no le agregué ese. ¿Por qué? Porque cuando tenemos verbos auxiliares no se aplica esa regla. Entonces es más fácil hablar eh, cuando estamos en este tema, es más fácil. Para hacerlo negativo, solo hago can not. ¿Qué abreviado es así? She can't. Ella no puede hablar tres lenguajes. She can't speak three languages. Um, también se utiliza para pedir permiso. Si yo quisiera pedir permiso para abrir la ventana, por ejemplo, can I open window? Es con I. <laughs> Can I open the window? Estoy pidiendo permiso. En el contexto que lo tenemos en la plataforma, lo estamos hablando solo para uh, uh, habilidad. Como preguntarle a la habilidad, Can you, por ejemplo, Can you cook? ¿Puedes cocinar? Can you cook? Esto sería en pregunta. Es un verbo auxiliar. Para hablar de habilidades, para pedir permisos, etc. Okay. ¿Tienen alguna otra pregunta? Mañana vamos a finalizar con esto del can. ¿Cómo hacer oraciones afirmativas, negativas, preguntas? Vamos a practicarlo y con eso terminaríamos la Sección 5. Uh, muchos de ustedes ya terminaron, ya tienen su diploma. 
pero seguimos practicando, ampliando conocimientos, solventando dudas y no me han dicho si quieren que repasemos algún tema en específico. No. For me, no, but uh, and I don't know if the rest want to repass a topic. Would you like to review any topic, any specific topic? Alguien que le gustaría repasar algún topic en específico? Ok. Uh, mañana igual va a haber clase. Vamos a tener la última clase. Vamos a seguir practicando con el auxiliar Ken. Cómo utilizarlo en oraciones afirmativas, negativas, preguntas de los dos tipos. Yes, no question y WH questions. Y este, voy a hacerles un repaso de algún tema de la plataforma que yo haya sentido que lo practicamos muy poco. Creo que podría ser los frequency adverbs. Así es que eso, uh, los espero mañana en clases. And thank you for joining today's section. Sleep well and see you tomorrow. Thank you, Miss. You too. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, bye. 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 bye to all. Rest.